In order to be able to design digital control systems, we need to be able to describe digital or discrete time signals and systems. In this video, we look at the description of discrete time signals and systems in the time domain. On this page, we look at three basic discrete time signals, as well as how to describe an arbitrary discrete time signal. The digital impulse is denoted by delta with argument k minus n, where k is the integer discrete time index and n is an integer constant. It is defined as 1 when k is equal to n and 0 everywhere else. A plot of the impulse is shown here. The digital unit step is denoted by mu with argument k minus n where k is again the discrete time index and n is a constant. It is defined as 1 for all time values greater or equal than n and 0 everywhere else. A plot of the unit step is shown here. The digital sinusoidal signal is given by the constant a times the cosine of omega times k plus phi where a omega and phi are constants and k is the time index a is the amplitude omega is the digital frequency and phi is the phase shift omega is restricted to be no more than pi in magnitude since a discrete time signal cannot represent frequencies higher than half the sampling frequency an arbitrary discrete time signal can simply be described by a sequence of real numbers where each number corresponds to a specific time index. However, it is useful to describe it as a sum of scaled digital impulses. The first term is the signal value at k equal to 0 multiplied with an impulse centered at k equal to 0. The second term is the signal at k equal to 1 times an impulse delayed by one time step. The third term is the signal at k equal to 2 times an impulse delayed by two time steps, etc. This can be written in some notation like this. Here we assume that the signal for negative time indices is zero. This is not necessary for the definition of discrete time signals, but it is an assumption we will often make. Let's now move on to the description of discrete time systems in the time domain. On this page, we describe linear time invariant systems using difference equations. Consider this diagram of an LTI system with general input R and output Y. To describe the system, we need to describe how the system reacts to any input. The difference equation description is given here. The relationship between the input and output is described as the current output plus coefficient a1 times the previous output plus similar terms down to coefficient a n times the output of n times steps back is equal to coefficient b0 times the current input plus coefficient b1 times the previous input plus similar terms down to coefficient bm times the input of m times steps back. Here n is the order of the system and m is not more than n. To make this concrete, let's look at a simple example. In this example, we have a first order system. a1 is equal to minus 0 0.95, b0 is 0, and b1 is equal to 1. We can easily rearrange the terms such that the current output is the only term on the left hand side. The current output is therefore described in terms of the previous outputs as well as the current and previous inputs and if we know the initial conditions of the system we can therefore calculate the output of the system in response to any input by calculating this equation at each time step. We can equivalently represent the difference equation by a block diagram using only gain, summation, and unit delay blocks. To see this, let's draw the block diagram for our example. This block denotes a unit delay, which means that the input signal is delayed by one time step 
to form the output signal. If we apply the output signal yk on the input of this block, the output of the block is the output signal delayed by one time step y at k minus 1. We can implement this equation by drawing that y of k is equal to 0 0.95 times y of k minus 1 plus r of k minus 1. It should now be obvious that we can easily implement the system as a computer program. Let's go through the pseudocode for our example. We first have to initialize the system, so we set the variable y previous to 0 and the variable r previous to the current input value. At each sampling instant, we calculate the difference equation by taking 0 0.95 times y previous plus r previous and storing that in variable y. The current output and input are the previous output and input at the next time step, so we store the current output in y previous and the current input in r previous. Our goal in this module is to design a digital controller. We would always be able to describe such a digital controller with a difference equation, and it should now be clear that if this is indeed the case, we can easily implement our designed controller as a computer program. Let's now look at another description of a discrete time LTI model, namely the impulse response. For this approach, we describe the system by the output signal of the system when we apply a digital impulse to the input. We call the impulse response G of K. To illustrate the idea, let's take our example of the previous page and calculate its impulse response. We have our difference equation we apply an impulse to the input and we assume that the system is initially at rest. The output at time step 0 is 0 0.95 times y at minus 0, which is 0, plus r at minus 0, which is 0, which results in 0. The output at time step 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. The output at time step 2 is 0 0.95 times 1 plus 0, which is 0 0.95, etc. We can easily identify the pattern as y at time step k being 0 0.95 to the power k minus 1 for k greater or equal to 1 and 0 everywhere else. This is then the impulse response g of k of our system. Graphically, we can draw the response of the system to an impulse input as an exponentially decaying signal that starts at time step 1. We now move on to the question of how to calculate the output of a system in response to an arbitrary input using the impulse response. We have earlier seen that we can describe an arbitrary input as the sum of scaled impulses. Since we work with a linear system, the output of the system in response to the sum of scaled input components is the same as the sum of the scaled outputs in response to the individual input components. The input components in this case are time-shifted impulses. And since we are working with a time-invariant system, the system response to a time-shifted impulse is simply the time-shifted impulse response. The output can therefore be described as the input at time step 0 times the unshifted impulse response plus the input at time step 1 times the impulse response delayed by one time step, etc. This can be written in some notation as follows, which we recognize as the discrete convolution operation. We can therefore calculate the output of the system by calculating the discrete convolution between its input and its impulse response. In this video, we have briefly looked at time domain descriptions of discrete time signals. We have also looked at two time domain descriptions of discrete time systems, namely difference equations and the impulse response. It is difficult to work with systems and signals in the time domain. So in the next video, we will convert these time domain descriptions to the Z domain.
which is more convenient for some operations and analyses.